right, Greece, they have a plan. They have a plan. The question is, can they implement it? A lot of people are saying no. I'll tell you what Costas Paris is going to say right now. Actually, I'll let him say it himself. Costas Paris, you're in town today. <laughs> yes. So we're lucky to have you on. All right, look, you've been in Greece. You've been following this story very closely. What happens now in Greece? It's all a matter of implementation, and the implementation will come after the April elections. Mm -hmm. We don't have a date yet for the April elections, but it will be sometime in April we hear. Uh, the issue is uh, that the austerity that has been promised by the Greeks is very, very tough. Elections are coming up. Um, we have already a number of desertions from parties. Uh, deputies are just leaving the parties because they didn't vote for the austerity mm -hmm. package. Uh, and uh, we have the two main parties, the, uh, the ruling socialists until now and the conservative opposition, which looks like it's going to win the election next time around, uh, in a very uh, uh, tough place because they will have to implement it. And their ratings, uh, their, their popularity looks very much, uh, has dropped uh, immensely. Uh, so we do not see, we cannot see a single party government. It's probably going to be a coalition of government, which complicates things. And Costas, what about support beyond the parties themselves? What about support for the euro itself among the Greek people? Well, is the, that this, still strong? This, is, this, is, this, is the, uh, uh, this is the issue here. Uh, uh, although 90% of Greeks are against the austerity, more than 70% want to stay in the euro. Uh, so, uh, because they understand that if they leave the euro, uh, the, the Greek economy is really going to, to nosedive. Uh, it's going to be you know, More so than it has already. Oh, absolutely. Much absolutely, more so. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, so, uh, it will, you know, there's going to be pressure to whoever gets elected mm. to get a little bit better terms. However, the Eurozone and the IMF don't want to give any better terms. Actually, they want even tougher terms. Uh, so that's what the problem well, is. And, I mean, we had reports, you know, these leaked special reports over the weekend that said that even the, the plans in place now aren't going to solve all of Greece's problems. I mean, a lot of these numbers that we yeah, saw I mean, were, the, the I don't want to say fudged. Actually, I do want to say fudged. Right. I mean, I like, mean the, they're basically made up. Yeah, the debt by 2020 is still meant right. to be 120% of GDP. I mean, it's completely unsustainable, isn't it? Well, 120% of GDP continues to be unsustainable. Yeah. <laughs> around something 90% of GDP can be considered sustainable. But, I mean, how can you put together some statistics eight years down the line if you don't know what's going to happen in Greece mm -hmm. the next four yeah. weeks? Uh, right. So we don't know what's going to happen by two, 2020. The market uh, and a lot of analysts and most economists are uh, uh, convinced uh, that Greece must, must default. Uh, and if it defaults, it has to, to exit the euro. That's the only way so that it can devalue its currency uh, and become a little bit more competitive. However, if it devalues its currency, and since Greece doesn't produce much, but it imports everything, uh, it will have a major problem. Is anyone talking seriously, just quickly, is anyone talking seriously at the political level about the day after that happens, if it happens, and, and what needs to be done to prepare for that? Or do people just not want to talk about it? They don't want to talk about it. They're too horrified to talk about it. I don't think there's any plans whatsoever. There were reports that the banks <laughs> of Greece scary. may be maybe printing drachmas, which was the old right. currency, but there's no, there's no preparation whatsoever. Oh, well, that's reassuring. Yeah. Great, yeah.